The SpaceX Starship at Starbase's orbital launch site is keeping the excitement alive, ensuring no dull moments. After a quiet Christmas break, things got lively with a vent party at the launch site. The tank farm test included remarkable venting from the newly installed large horizontal tanks. Simultaneously, the orbital launch mount joined the action, actively participating in the activities. The significant purging observed from the liquid oxygen side of the tank farm and the OLM is likely part of a retest for the ground system, addressing issues that led to the static fire scrub of Booster 10 last week. In fact, the Super Heavy Booster 10 has a complex propellant distribution system using cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen, with a unique landing tank connected to the center 13 engines to reduce propellant sloshing. If you aren't already aware, Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines are powered by cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen, which are the fuel and oxidizer respectively. These propellants are stored in large main tanks and are fed into the engines through a complex series of pipes. Super Heavy also features a liquid oxygen landing or header tank, a smaller isolated reservoir designated for the landing burn. This tank is specifically connected to only the center 13 Raptor engines, minimizing the effects caused by propellant sloshing within the substantially larger main tank. As per ring watchers, there are a total of 40 valves designated for the outer 20 Raptor engines, 20 for liquid methane main tank supply, and 20 for liquid oxygen main tank supply. Meanwhile, the inner 13 Raptor engines have a total of 39 valves, 13 for liquid methane main tank supply, 13 for liquid oxygen main tank supply, and 13 for liquid oxygen landing tank supply. These complexities led SpaceX to encounter challenges with ground support equipment during recent testing. While specifics remain undisclosed, SpaceX continues its efforts to enhance manufacturing capabilities. After the recent venting test, anticipation builds for Booster 10's upcoming static fire trial. The success of this firing involving 33 engines would mark a triumphant conclusion to SpaceX's 2023 endeavors. Scheduled for December 29th of 2023, a road closure at Starbase hints at potential test activities. Should the B-10 test not proceed as planned, a possibility looms for its return in the early days of January of 2024, specifically on the 3rd and 4th. SpaceX is moving swiftly towards the launch of IFT-3, propelled by the efficient performance of the launch site following IFT-2. The last obstacle in their path appears to be submitting their report to the FAA and securing subsequent approval. Once these tests conclude, the Starship upper stage will likely be assembled atop the booster, finalizing the launch vehicle for Integrated Flight Test 3. The preparations for the third Starship test flights align with the forthcoming Artemis missions, including Artemis 2, set for a 10-day lunar orbit in November of 2024, as well as Artemis 3, anticipated to land astronauts near the lunar south pole around 2025. As we pry our sights away from the future to gaze upon the present, today marks another crucial event set to unfold. The long-awaited moment is finally upon us. At 8.07pm, the Falcon Heavy is set to launch the secretive X-37B space plane. SpaceX crews commenced the process by moving the towering 230-foot-tall Falcon Heavy to position at Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center on Wednesday morning. Notably, the commercial space giant typically conducts its Starlink missions at Launch Complex 40, located at the nearby Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. In case Thursday's launch faces any setbacks, there's a backup opportunity on Friday, albeit with a mere 5% chance of weather-related constraints, mainly associated with potential winds. The Space Force's 45th Weather Squadron, 45th Weather Squadron forecasts an 80% chance of favorable weather for Falcon Heavy's launch. However, there's a slight to moderate risk risk of upper-level wind shear due to an approaching weak front, with sporadic showers expected in central Florida on Thursday morning. Much of the upper-level moisture associated with the wave will move off the coast by midday, leaving only topped showers along the front to the west by the launch window. Therefore, the primary launch weather concern is the cumulus cloud rule associated with any showers that may develop ahead and develop ahead and along the front, the squadron's forecast said. In the event of any delays, SpaceX has set a secondary launch window for Falcon Heavy at 8.06 p.m. on Friday. 
This mission holds considerable importance, as it marks the seventh secretive orbital mission for the Boeing-built X-37B. Named USSF-52, this mission marks the first deployment of the autonomous space plane using a Falcon Heavy rocket. Previously, the space plane was launched in May of 2020 atop a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. The classified spacecraft set a record with an impressive 908 days in orbit before its November of 2022 landing at KSE's launch and landing facility. Our national security space launches transport our most important capabilities into orbit, Brigadier General Kristen Panzenhagen, who commands Space Launch Delta 45, said of the X-37B mission in a November press release. We partner closely with our launch service providers and the entire team is focused on executing a successful mission. Panzenhagen said. The 45th Weather Squadron hasn't issued an extensive forecast for the Falcon 9 mission. According to the National Weather Service, there's an expectation of mostly cloudy and cool conditions Thursday night at Cape Canaveral Space Force Base, with temperatures around 52 degrees Fahrenheit and a west-southwest wind of 5 to 10 miles per hour. Let's hope that the weather cooperates with SpaceX this time. Meanwhile, in the days ahead, we might witness a groundbreaking event, the very first private landing on the moon. The Peregrine Lunar Lander has completed all its launch milestones and has been stacked atop the Vulcan Centaur rocket that will carry it to space on January 8th of 2024. The Astrobotics Peregrine Lunar Lander is expected to attempt a landing on the moon on February 23rd of 2024. The landing will make history as not only is Peregrine Astrobotic's first lander mission, but this is also possibly set to be the first time a private spacecraft has set down on the moon, pending the progress of other missions as well, such as an intuitive machine's launch aboard SpaceX set for no earlier than mid-February. If you've been following the lunar industry, you understand that landing on the moon's surface is incredibly difficult. With that said, our team has continuously surpassed expectations and demonstrated incredible ingenuity during flight review spacecraft testing, and major hardware integrations. Astrobotics CEO John Thornton said in a statement from the company, We are ready for launch and for landing. President of ULA Tori Bruno celebrated the final steps toward the launch of the private lunar lander with a stunning time-lapse video shared on his X-Feed on December 22nd. Now that's what I call a tree topper. Time lapse of Peregrine Lander being settled atop the Vulcan rocket. Next stop, the moon, he said. Though Peregrine has come through three weeks of important final checks and fueling needed to be achieved prior to launch, there is a whole new set of milestones for the spacecraft to clear after blastoff. These will begin shortly after launch when the lander will separate from its Vulcan rocket carrier and will power on, following which it will establish communication with ground control on Earth. This communication will flow through the NASA Deep Space Network System to the Astrobotic Mission Control Center in Pittsburgh, allowing Peregrine's operators to determine its position, orientation, and operating health. Following this and around 40 minutes after separation, ground control will begin sending commands to the Lunar Lander's propulsion system. One of the first series of commands will tell the thrusters to reorient, reorientate Peregrine so its energy harvesting solar panels are directed toward the sun, allowing them to start powering up the spacecraft's battery. The team at Astrobotic will then perform maneuvers in Earth's orbit that prepare Peregrine for insertion into an orbit around the moon. The spacecraft will maintain a stable lunar orbit, performing system checks before heading for a historic touchdown at the end of February. I have high praise for the professionalism, dedication, and technical expertise demonstrated by the Astrobotic team throughout the complex multi-year Peregrine development program. Peregrine Mission 1 Director Sharad Bhaskara said in the statement, Evolving Peregrine from a paper concept to a fully tested spacecraft ready for launch is a remarkable achievement for a small business. From Starship's intricate propellant distribution to Falcon Heavy's imminent launch and the groundbreaking private lunar lander, the space race surges onward. Will boost Mr. 10's static fire succeed? What pivotal role will IFT-3 play in SpaceX's journey? And as Peregrine prepares for the moon landing, will private space exploration redefine history? Stay tuned as the coming days promise groundbreaking events in space exploration. That's all folks, thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. Space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up, and happy holidays.